Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt so those who are having a good time. It's good to come and chat and have a good time. I like that. That's great. Uh, welcome to our service of worship this morning. A uh, few announcements that we want to make. Next Sunday is our annual business meeting. Um, it'll be held right after church. There will be food. We will give you the food first to soothe the savage beasts. I might even know. Well, <laughs> it'll be a simple meal, but uh, um, please, um, please try to come if you if you remember if you possibly can. Um, it gets a little harder to get quorums sometimes, so we really need folks to show up. I don't expect it will be a real long meeting, but uh, we do need you to come. Um, and uh, next month we will not have a tell high uh, work day. Um, so the director is and the staff are trying to get some more stuff that we can do for them. And when they do, they'll get back to us with some dates. If you don't get a community courier, I figured everybody got one, but, uh, but you don't all get one. And um, they, we made the front page. There, yeah, <laughs> that was, and I didn't realize I had left before the woman uh, uh, came up there and I just got it out of the mailbox and went, hey, I know those people. And it's really a nice article. I was, I was just really pleased with that. So um, there's a copy of it in Crane Hall um, and we'll put this one up. Oh, I guess there's a copy of it there too. So, oh, and one more thing. Um, speaking of Tell High Camp, they're having a turkey dinner drive through on Friday uh, from 2 to 6. It's in your bulletin, so you can see it in your pocket and not forget. Um, but you have to reserve it by, by the 9th, which is Wednesday. So, get a meal. <laughs> um, I think those are all the announcements that we have at this point. Anybody have an announcement that we need to bring up? Alrighty then. Um, we'll prepare our hearts and listen to uh, the voice of truth. Let's pray. Lord, there are so many voices that are calling out to us, that are screaming at us, that just surround us and, Lord, would pull us in a thousand directions. Lord, tune our ears to hear your voice. Help us to take the time to listen. Give us the discerning spirit that we know. We, we know your voice in our hearts. Be with us in this, in this time of worship, O oh God, that our hearts may be lifted up to you, that we may truly worship you in spirit and in truth, that our hearts would be blessed and encouraged in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Now if you'll stand um, <clears throat> and we'll sing. The first one is not going to look very familiar at all, but I think the tune will be familiar to you. That's why I'm, I'm having us do all three verses. We haven't been doing that a lot, but um, I, think, I think we will. So...
I have a few prayer requests or mostly updates on prayer requests. Um, we we uh, started out with that uh, kind of changed last night with Macy. Um, uh, Diana written, did well with her spinal tap, doesn't have to go back uh, until March, and they were praising God that they're just passing. It was a year ago this past Saturday that she first started having um, all this treatment. And, um, and you know, if I, if I, I think if I was Tina, I, I don't know that I would be saying praise. Last Saturday, they discovered it, and look how far she has come. They've been through so much. The prognosis wasn't great, but it's been a year. It's been a tough year, but it's she's still with us. So, um, and uh, she's come. God does answer prayer, and it said will be, then she'll be. It says she'll be starting back to school, but then yesterday she had to go back to the hospital. Uh, two weeks ago, she'd had an ear infection, and yesterday her eardrum broke. Her numbers were too low to operate today. Hoping to do it Monday or Tuesday. And uh, again, Tina said, well, it's just a little setback. <laughs> so um, pray, just keep praying. I know that you're, I know that you're praying, but, um, and God, God has done uh, marvelous things. It's, it's, there is reason to praise him and reason to keep praying, obviously. Um, Charlotte asked me to pray, uh, us to pray for her sister Kay, who's going to be having knee surgery Thursday. Um, Suzanne is home, uh, but she's really tired, uh, so please send lots of prayers for healing and for strength. Um, Barry and Doris, uh, Barry is coming along with his therapy. Um, of course, it's always slower than you want it to be, but he's coming along. Uh, Doris has had a lot of tests and uh, has tests ahead of her, um, and so we want to pray that she's going to have strength and comfort and uh, and uh, that I know they appreciate everyone praying for them. Um, are there any other uh, requests that you'd like to mention? Anybody? All right. Um, then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be together. I thank you that we can together lift up these concerns and praises. And Lord, um, you know, we, we just keep hearing about this. It's just been such a hard road for Macy and for the whole family. And yet they know they could have been in a very different place. Uh, a year down the road, and we're so grateful that she is still alive, and we're grateful that she is even um, moving into maintenance. Uh, Lord, I pray that um, that you would continue to bring healing to her, that you would wipe that cancer from her body. I pray, Lord, that you would um, just drive the infection out of her as well. Lord, bring her healing. Be with her family. Just surround them. Continue to surround them with your love and your grace and your strength. Thank you for the hope that we have in you and for the answers to prayer that you give. Lord, we thank you that Suzanne, Suzanne's home. We pray that you would continue to heal and strengthen her uh, for Barry, that he would continue to uh, get stronger day by day. Um, and for Doris, Lord, I, I pray that, that they would um, know best what's going on and how best to treat her and to uh, find uh, ways to manage her pain. Um, just bless them and uh, help them to know that we we are lifting them up in prayer. We pray for Charlotte's sister Kay that her surgery would go well this week and that, um, that she would have a, a good recovery. Lord, we just pray, um, 
for our church and our church family. And Lord, I, I ask that you would be guiding and directing us. I pray, oh God, that we would um, hear your voice, that we would follow you. I pray that we would be seeking to conform our lives to your will and to your word. I pray that you would build unity and grace and love in our midst. Lord, may we uh, do your will and your way for your honor and glory. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Um, last week we looked at uh, 1 Samuel, and we talked about a woman named Hannah who prayed fervently for a child, and the Lord answered her prayer uh, with the birth of a little boy named Samuel. Hannah had promised God that if he would give her a son, that she would give him back to the Lord to serve him for his whole life. Um, and she meant that in a very literal way. When he was maybe three years old, she brought him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. That was the place where Israel worshipped until the temple was built many years later. That's where their sacrifices were offered. And that's where a priest named Eli lived along with his two sons. Now Eli, he was a good man. Except that he allowed his sons to abuse their role and their power as priests. Taking the best of what was to be offered to God and using it for themselves. In case you were wondering, God hates that. Uh, it degraded worship, and it was an insult to God himself. Uh, and that never ends well. Uh, a man of God, uh, in chapter 2, the chapter we skipped over, uh, a man of God comes to Eli and tells him just how badly it will end for he and his sons. Uh, in 1 Samuel 2.30, he says, Those who honor me I will honor, um, speaking the Lord's words, uh, but those who despise me will be disdained. And uh, so there's um, kind of trouble ahead for Eli. But Samuel, as he grows up, he doesn't follow uh, the path of Eli's sons and becomes um, a faithful servant of the Lord. At this point, in 1 Samuel 3, um, he is still uh, a, a young boy. He's not the baby he was in chapter 1. But uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. That, that When I first read that, the lamp of God had not gone out, it sounds like some sort of mystical something or other. It just means they, they kept a light going. They kept a, a, There was a candle that went all night, and it was still going. So it hadn't been blown out. So all it really means is it was night. Okay, The candle hadn't gone out yet. And uh, Samuel is in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was, the ark being... Um, the place where later it would be in the Holy of Holies of the temple. Um, verse 4. Then the Lord called out, called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call, go back and lie down. So he went and he lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. I've tried to sleep. Now go back and lie down. That was in the, in the footnotes. So I'm pretty sure he said that. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. He goes on to tell Samuel some of the very same things that the prophet had said to Eli earlier, basically saying, Eli, you've blown it and things are not going to end well for you. Um, and then we see Eli, then the morning, Eli goes to Samuel and goes, so what were you saying? What happened? What did God say? And Eli's kind of, or Samuel's kind of going, uh, well, I got uh, places to be. But he had to say here to his mentor, to the person acting as his father in that place, these difficult words um, that the Lord has told him. So we've been looking at some of the prayers offered by Bible characters in various situations to see what we can learn about prayer. Abraham prayed for justice. Moses prayed to see God. Hannah prayed for a son. What did Samuel pray for? What was his prayer? Yeah. Should have asked you that before and told you to look for it. It was a prayer that Eli taught him that very night. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We've read a lot of nice, eloquent prayers, right? Asking for this, this, this. But maybe the most eloquent of all, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Um, he didn't ask for anything. He just quieted himself to hear God's voice so that he could obey him. Years ago, I had heard a story from Max Licato that I always think of when I think of uh, hearing God. So I'm going to tell it now. It's a little long, but I love this story. It's a story of three knights who desire to win the hand of a beautiful princess, because, of course, that's what stories about knights are about, right? So what they like to do in those days, he created a contest. He called together these three knights and he explained the conditions. They would have to journey through the forbidden forest and even the brave knights drew back a little at this. As far as anyone in the kingdom knew, no one had ever survived the forbidden forest. It was said that the trees were so thick that one could barely tell day from night, even when the sun shone its brightest. The only inhabitants were creatures called hope knots. And while no one had ever seen them, those who lived near the forest could hear their eerie cries at night. The king went on, I will not leave you completely to your own devices, however. Each of you may choose a companion to go with you. In addition, I will provide one other aid for, the, for your journey. At that, the king pulled out a beautiful ivory flute and he held it before the knights and he said, this flute was hand carved for me many years ago. As you will hear, it has a unique sound. There is only one other like it in the world and it belongs to my son, the prince. Three times a day while you're in the forest, I will go out on the balcony of the castle, which stood quite close to the forbidden forest, and I will play this tune on my flute. Listen for it, and it will help guide you back to the castle. After that, the king played the tune, and the knights listened very carefully as they considered this dangerous task. When he was finished, the king said, Sleep well, brave knights, for tomorrow the contest begins. The villagers could speak a little else after the knights had gone into the forest. Many suspected that none of the knights would survive. Others placed bets on their favorite. Finally, after many days, just before dusk, two haggard figures were seen hurtling from the forbidden forest, and words spread quickly throughout the village. There was much discussion that evening over who had survived. Many thought only Sir Carlisle the Strong could have made it. Others thought it had to be uh, Sir, Al Sir Alan, whose speed was legendary. A few thought it might be Sir Cassid on the wise. 
And of course, only daybreak and the announcement of the king would reveal it. Finally, the moment came to reveal the winner. At the king's signal, the people became quiet, and once again, the king began to play the flute. As the ivory instrument sang out, the people turned as one to see who would enter. The doors opened, and across the floor strode Sir Cassida, the wise, following the sound of the flute as he had in the forest. Cassidon bowed before the king, who said, Sir Cassidon, pray tell us of your journey. And everybody leaned forward to listen. The Hope Knots were crafty, he began. They attacked, but we fought back. They took our horses, but we continued. What nearly destroyed us, though, was something far worse. What was that? asked the princess. They imitated. They imitated? asked the king. Yes, my king. Every time the song of your flute would enter the forest, a hundred flutes would begin to play. And all around us we heard music, songs from every direction. I do not know what became of Carlisle and Alon, he continued, but I know that strength and speed will not help one hear the right song. The king asked the question that was on everyone's lips. Then how did you hear the song? I chose the right companion, he answered, and he motioned for his fellow traveler to enter. The people gasped as the prince strode into the great hall. In his hand, he carried the flute. I knew there was only one who could play your song exactly like you, Cassidon explained. So I asked him to travel with me. And as we journeyed, he played your song. I learned it so well that the thousand false flutes tried to hide your music. I could hear your song above them all and follow it. I love that story because I think... Uh, even perhaps now more than ever, we do live in a world where there are just so many voices. There are so many that are claiming our attention. And if we're going to follow God well, if we're going to serve him well, we need to be able to distinguish his voice from all the other sounds. And as I said, there's plenty of them out there. There are people who claim to speak for God, claim to speak the truth, Claim you should believe and follow what they say. And unless you're listening closely to the words you know belong to God, you're going to follow whatever voice appeals to you in the moment. The two things that help us to build discernment are time spent in God's word, reflecting on his word, and time spent in the presence of God. And that's why the wise, uh, the wise knight had the presence with him, right? And the word or the song. He had uh, the prince and the flute, and he could practice knowing what it sounded like, knowing, uh, knowing how to discern the king's song. Dallas Willard, a Christian author, um, wonderful Christian author, wrote a great book on hearing God. And I'm going to share uh, several quotes from him. Uh, I think he just captivates a lot of uh, what it means to, to be someone who hears from God. He said, It is much more important to cultivate the quiet, inward space of a constant listening than to always be approaching God for specific direction. You know, I've found that I actually pray less often or maybe less desperately to hear God's voice on a specific matter than I used to. Not because I don't care, but because I have more confidence in God's leading. If we cultivate an attitude of speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, then I believe that he will guide us. Um, and I believe that if I start heading in the wrong direction, he's going to put roadblocks in my way or, or give me a, one of these, you know, but straighten me out a little bit. But the main place that we learn God's will is from God's word. 
Uh, and again, Willard says, it cannot be stressed too much that the permanent address at which the word of God may be found is the Bible. And not the, um, <laughs> you know, the flip it open and point. You know, you've probably, you've heard all the jokes about that, right? I'm joking. Um, and while Samuel heard God's voice directly in this story, even this chapter closes with the words, the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And so we want to know what God is saying? Spend time in his word. And while we find the truth in his word, it's through principles, not just a verse that pops up. Right? Uh, again, Willard says, if the Bible says something once, notice it, but don't count it as a fundamental principle. If it says it twice, think about it twice. If it's repeated many times, then dwell on it to seek to understand it. What you want to believe from the Bible is its message on the whole and use it as a standard for interpreting the peripheral, the other passages. People get in trouble when they take an isolated verse and turn it into a theology. That's often how cults happen, right? But rather, we want to give emphasis to the same things the Bible emphasizes. One verse about something that's a little fuzzy to begin with is a bad place to decide, well, that's, that's my whole theology. That's what God is saying to me. Um, uh, perhaps the classic one is there's a statement in First or Second Corinthians is about being baptized for the dead. And it's just a piece of a phrase. It's, it's not a principle, but there, there are groups that have taken this and said, oh, the Bible wants us to be baptized for the dead, so we're going to have this whole, and things have grown up around that. Well, no, <laughs> don't do that. Do things that are supported over and over in the scripture. Those are the principles that we want uh, to grab hold of. As we live a life pleasing to God, we will be living in God's will. Well, it says, generally speaking, we are in God's will whenever we are leading the kind of life he wants for us, which is defined largely by scripture. That leaves a lot of room for initiative on our part, which is essential. Our individual initiatives are central to his will for us. In other words, we're not we're not slaves to some kind of a there's a road that's this wide and you have to walk on it and you have to know each little footprint in order to follow God. But you know his principles and you're following him and seeking him. And sometimes you think, you know, you know what I think would be a good thing to do? I don't know, maybe we should find another Christian organization and do some painting for them. You know, or did, I didn't get that from the Bible. I got that from Tim, right? <laughs> we got that. Um, but that's in line generally with the things that scripture teaches us, right? And I think that's true um, of a lot of things when we're seeking God's will. Uh, Isaiah 30, 21 is a verse I learned quite a while ago that um, uh, kind of changed my thinking on that in, in some ways. It says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And I think that's often the way God does lead us. You know, I kind of want God to go way out in front and say, okay, I've cleared everything. All the obstacles are gone. There are no dangers. There's nothing bad's going to happen. Okay, you can come now. But we go back to that little faith is risk, right? God wants us to set out in faith. And faith often means that we're taking, almost always means we're taking some risk. But the Lord won't let us go astray when our hearts are desiring to know him. You know, even with Samuel, <laughs> it actually didn't occur to me until I was reading it again this morning, God calls him four times, right? 
he was patient with him because he didn't really know. He just, you know, he had a good heart. Uh, Samuel had a good heart when he heard the voice. The only explanation he had was Eli. So he took off and he asked Eli what he wanted three times. And not until Eli told him was he able to say, oh, okay, now I know what to do next. Um, we learn his ways from the scripture and seek to go in those ways and follow those principles. And if we're missing it, God will say, okay, you know, you're not might need to veer a little bit this way or that. If we have the same willing heart that Samuel had, we will be led as Samuel was led. Uh, one more thing from Willard. He says, I don't believe God messes with our minds. I think sometimes Christians think that God's just messing with me. He's just going to see if I turn a foot the wrong way. No, I don't believe God messes with our minds. He's not mean. And if he has something to say to me, he'll say it. If he has to say it four times for me to go, oh, okay, that was God. He will. If our heart is in a place that we want to receive it, if our heart is in a place where we really don't want to receive it, you know, that may be different. God will not speak so softly that we cannot hear if we desire to hear. If you want to be sure to hear the song of the king when you're surrounded by the hope knots, we need to tune our ears to his voice before and during our time in the forbidden forest. Let's pray. Lord God, make us people who seek your voice, who cultivate a stillness where we can hear from you. Let us spend time in your word, not rushed, but seeking to understand, seeking your guidance. Lord, you you promised that your Holy Spirit would guide us in the, in the knowledge and the recalling and understanding of your word. And we ask for that in our hearts and lives. Lord, let us be seekers of you, followers of you, and faithful servants of yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we uh, begin our service of the Lord's Supper, we're going to take uh, a minute to pray the Lord's Prayer together. You can keep ripping that up if you'd like. <laughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Jesus shared his last earthly meal with his disciples. He took bread and thanks and broke it. Let me give thanks for the bread. Lord, we have just prayed that you would give us our daily bread. And we're grateful that you have provided so abundantly for us. Lord, may we seek spiritual nourishment as well. Feed our hearts and souls with all that we need to know you more. We are so grateful for the sacrifice that you made to make that possible. Amen. In memory of Jesus, let's take the bread. supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and, uh, 
Jesus took the cup and again he gave thanks. Let's give thanks for the cup. Lord, you freely offered yourself. You freely allowed your blood to be shed that we might be forgiven, that we might be healed, made whole as your sons and daughters. We receive this in grateful memory of you. Amen. Take it all of you. sing our final may be known on earth and his salvation among all nations. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.